when the IBA, which was the Independent Broadcasting Authority, came in, they were, what can I say, they were already instructed by the then incoming government who should get the licenses and who shouldn't. So there's another reason Capital Radio was never going to get that license. And, and we, I lost out in those days to on a radio station we called Solid Gold. So we all, despite having written the act for them. So they gave me the finger despite helping them. So that shows you the thoughts. I don't think there's very much difference between the, and I'm not talking about apartheid now, I'm talking about the mentality of the government today and the mentality of the government then. I think it's inherent, I think it's been taught and it's carried on. And they do not totally, in my opinion, understand commercial broadcasting in this country at all still. We, I, I find it a miracle we've done what we've done here. And I was part of the 16 people who was uh, sitting on the consultative committee uh, for writing the Broadcast Act in, in the in mid-90s. And, I, I, and it was deliberately, when Capital Radios came up and they were talking about outside, they were deliberately putting hard clauses in, not allowing outside interference or people to own radio stations. I think they limited a foreign ownership to 20% in those days. So there was no way it was ever going to be allowed back in to have a license again. But secretly, I have an eye on that area again. So Capital Gold, who knows? I mean, I've got Magic 828 here, which is a, a golden oldies station, as you might call it in the States. So we like to call it old school hits. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's crying out for it again down there. All the hits and more. Capital Gold.